afternoon. Afternoon. Sorry about that. Uh, we're good to go. Yep. How's your team looking for this match? How's your squad? Any injury news for us? Um, unfortunately, Wes Morgan and Papi Mendy uh, still out injured. Um, Wes hasn't trained with the group yet, um, but he's been out the last couple of days on the grass, but still uh, a way off in terms of joining back in with the squad. Uh, and Papi, we're assessing day by day, but uh, he won't be ready for tomorrow night. How far away do you think he is? Yeah, again, I think it's I would reluctant to put any time limit on it, really, because um, he's had an operation on his ankle a while ago. He's having a few issues with it, so I think he's due to see a specialist today. Until we get that report, I'd be reluctant to put a time frame on it. And Didi has scored his first Premier League goal for you. How pleasing is that? How well do you think he has fitted in? Well, I think he's grown into it, um, but I think more importantly, the team over the last few matches have, have really grown in stature and confidence. And, and I think he's benefited from that um, team play in terms of the confidence in the team. I think it's better, you know, he's benefited from it individually. But, uh, has he been on a, a fairly steep learning curve? I mean, he came from. Belgian well, I think because of his age, we're always reluctant to put too much pressure on them. I think I still am. He, he is only 20 years of age, but you can see from all the attributes he, had, he has that I think he's uh, tailor-made for the Premiership. Are we seeing the best of him? Well, I'd always like to think that players would like to improve. I think um, hopefully he's uh, with us for a long time and over the seasons we'll see him improve season by season. See. With you for a long time, do you do you fear that he might not be? He continues to play as, as well as he has done over. No, and no, and that's why I say he's with us for a long time. He's he's under a long term contract. Uh, we want to keep all our best players, of which he's one. Jamie Vardy also scored. He's now five in, in seven matches, if you include him playing with, with with England. How do you explain his turnaround? Well, again, I think I've said before, strikers, uh, they thrive on the confidence um, against Liverpool. Jamie managed to get back on the sh score sheet and he hasn't looked back since. Just how confident is he at the moment? I think they're all confident. Uh, you can see that in their play. Um, I think they're confident but not overconfident. I think there's a good balance between the two at the moment um, because we know that there's another tough test around the corner in Sunderland. It's five matches in a row now that... that uh, four uh, in the league. Well, what has that done in terms of improving the mood, improving well, yeah, confidence as well? I think footballers in general will tell you that um, the atmosphere and the um, atmosphere down the training ground, especially after all results, can always be better. Um, and as I say, it's been a, a good place to be. But as I say, they're not they're not complacent which um, is important as well. Um, we know the importance of the next few games and the next one being Sunderland. You're the first <coughs> manager to win four, your first four Premier League matches. What does that make you feel? How proud are you of that? Yes, very proud. I've said before that um, in terms of... Um, I've got a lot of people to thank along the way for that. My, my managers that I've been an assistant to before, uh, but ultimately it's the players that go out on the pitch and perform and uh, thankfully they've done that. Gusinic is one of those managers who has also uh, done it. Um, he, he, at the weekend, was, was saying that he perhaps had the opportunity to come here but recommended that they give you a chance. What, what does that mean to you? Again, of someone of that ilk, of course, it's um, it's an honour. But um, again, um, I'm not sure how many was spoken to. That's down to the owners. I'm just thankful that uh, I was given the opportunity in the end. Do you speak with Chris Hilling at all? No, I don't know him. No, don't know him. Um, so obviously to hear them words from someone that's had that career, um, you know, I'm thankful for. In terms of in terms of moving forwards now. Um, are you still looking over your shoulder a, a little bit of the relegation zone below? Or, you know, is, it, is it onwards and upwards? I think 
solely focus has to be on the next game because um, it's still tight down there. We know that any given opportunity, and I think we're really good proof of that, if a team puts a run together of three and four wins, it can make it even uh, closer. And so we have to make sure that we be ready for each game um, and the sole focus has to be on the next game. You look too far ahead in football and it has a habit of biting you on the bum. If you can beat Sunderland though, there is a chance of being in the top half of the table. What would that mean? Well, I think we can beat Sunderland, but also the other results can go um, the way of the teams down there at the moment. So we know it can be close and again, we just have to make sure that we focus on each game. Um, you know, it's been said before, it is an old cliche, but it's one we have to do at the moment. But is that, is that not something that you, you should strive for? I think we have to strive. I think we have to strive to be competitive and win every game. Um, and, and the next one in line is Sunderland. Leicester lost at Sunderland earlier in the season. You reflect on that, man. Again, I think it was a close game. I'm expecting a very close game tomorrow. I think we know that um, Sunderland are fighting for their lives. We've been in that situation before where you uh, slowly run out of games. So we're aware that they're a dangerous opposition. I think um, they proved when they went to Crystal Palace and, and scored four, they are a capable capable side. Uh, I think any team that's got Jermaine Defoe in it has to make sure that... Um, you not only keep him quiet, but you're aware of his goal threat. So we're aware of the opposition and respect the opposition, but we're in a good place at the moment. Do you feel for David Moyes in the, the position that he's in? Well, I, I think anyone that's down there, we've been there ourselves, and it. Um, I think you have that feeling for them, but you know that uh, it's football and it's it's making sure you take care of your own club first. And, and on, on that front, how important is it? maintain this, this momentum that, that you seem to be getting at the moment. Yeah, it's vitally important. We've got a big month coming up and um, we have to make sure that we play with the confidence um, but we respect the opposition as well. Thank you. Linda, please. Do you have to give special attention to Jermaine Defoe? Well, I think it w we've spoke about it over the last couple of days in terms of preparation. We know in the final third he can be a threat. Um, but obviously if you... We won't man-mark him, we won't do that, we won't put someone on him, but I think we have to be respectful of, of what type of players they've got in the team and I think Jermaine, his, uh, his record speaks for itself in terms of um, a goal scoring. Really pleased to see him uh, get recalled to the England squad um, and he, he took his goal really, really well. Tell me how Brighton is, um, how far away is, is he to come back? Sorry? Yeah, uh, sorry, Mark, Mark trained yesterday with the squad so it was a 24-hour bug um, he managed to complete training yesterday felt really tired after it but he's come through today I spoke with him after and uh, he's 100% fit and how pleased were you with Damari Gray stepping into his shoes yeah very pleased I think um, it's been well documented that Damari's been slightly frustrated because of game time I think um, I don't expect any player to be happy if they're not playing um, he's had to be patient um, and I thought he took his opportunity with both hands on Saturday. I know this does look ahead to the Sunderland game, but I just wanted to ask you whether or not you, you've had the opportunity or whether you are going to, to have a look at Madrid um, live in the flesh or whether you've been watching them on the box or videos, etc. Et I've managed to catch up, as I do with most oppositions that are coming up in two or three weeks. I've managed to catch up. I haven't watched them live yet, but um, you know we have our analyst department to keep me really informed in terms of games so when the time's right um, we'll make sure that the job's done for that as well. Is it necessary to actually physically watch them live? No I don't think so all the time I think if the opportunity arises it's good but I think you can get enough from your department in terms of the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition as we always do. Thank you. Ian please. Hi Ian. You're likely to be favourites tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure the whole of the book is that close, but we've won it a few times in your reign. How difficult does that make things? No, I don't think it does. I think um, for me it's another football match. We're at home. Um, we know the importance of it. As I said, um, whether we're playing the bottom or the top, the, the um, outcomes will be the same. We're after three points. Um, does your 100% win record almost become a bit of a motivation in itself? 
for the players, as in, you know, they want to keep your 100% record going and see how long they can keep that. It kind of takes on a bit of a, a life of its own. I haven't asked them. I, I wouldn't think so. I think they're more interested in the three points as as we are as a club rather than them individually or me as an individual. I think it's important that we all stay focused um, and make sure that we can give a good account of ourselves rather than get running away with things. It's been a long time since someone scored, five hours, 18 odd minutes, seven of the last eight have failed to score. How do you look at that? Do you, do you worry about that and think the goal's coming soon? Uh, and does that, does that allow you to stay on your toes, actually? I think we have to with the players I've mentioned. In you know We've mentioned Domain Defoe quite often in here recently now, and I think uh, we know that the quality that they've got, we have to be on our toes. You found I mean, five foot fives pretty special in all competition for in the Premier League. Have you found any routines that are working? Were you, were you a superstitious kind of player? It's funny, as a player, I was probably more superstitious than I am as a manager. Um, haven't got any lucky underpants, haven't got any lucky socks. Um, I tend to make sure that if your preparation's right, um, it will stand you in good stead. So for me, the most important things are doing things properly, whether that's me as a manager, them as players. And if you do that, you can look yourself in the mirror after and the result hopefully will take care of itself. No routines or anything on a match day that you adamant you have to do? No. Not <laughs> um, would you mind if I went back a few weeks um, and asked you about the trip to Dubai? Yes. We, we think, a few have spoken about actually the importance of that and look at the results since. Was it your idea? Um, no, it was more of a club idea. As I said, we've been trying to do it for months since Christmas. Uh, the opportunity never arose because of the replays in the cup, because of games, because of everything around that. It was the first opportunity we had. So I, I was really grateful of the owners um, making sure that um, we could do that financially. Um, I think it was great for everyone to be together. Uh, as I say, we went out for a meal together, we socialised together, we trained together. It was very good to be all, all in the same hotel together and spending a few days, really. It was, it was really beneficial, I found. A bit old school as well in terms of team building, especially in the mid-season, isn't it? How much do you put that team building down to some of the, not all of it, of course, but down to the success of well, we've got a good team spirit anyway, and um, as you said, it was the first opportunity we had to get away together. Um, uh, it's, it's got this nice word at the moment, hasn't it? Warm weather training. Uh, it was my first trip to Dubai, and um, as I say, I, I saw the benefits in terms of the weather, but also just to be in and around the lads um, when we were around the pool, when we were training, uh, it, was, it was really enjoyable. The five from five in all competition is special. Jose Mourinho is a special one, what are you? Well again, I, I think um, I know I have to keep my feet firmly on the ground because there's, a, there's very fine margins in football and um, along the way um, we've maybe, I'm thinking of the West Ham game, we had to ride our luck at times, uh, but you have to dig deep and um, maybe I'm the lucky one, I don't know. <laughs> Let's hope so, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Anything more for today before we go into tomorrow? Just quick one, Phil from PA. You talked about the team group being good. We saw that last season. We can see it now. In terms of Dubai, did it just did the players just need, need remind them of that team group just to regalvanise it? No, I think um, it's always tried to be there. As I said, it was the first opportunity we'd had uh, for us all to go as a squad together, and I thought that was important. That. Just Hi. Again, I'm Wilfred and Deedy, and the quality of the goals that he scores. He doesn't seem to score double goals, does he? Well, I think he's capable of it. Um, but as you say, it's, uh, I remember the one against Derby and obviously now on Saturday. Um, he's encouraged to shoot. He's encouraged to shoot from distance, as they all are at times. Um, but long may that continue. And what about the speculation today about him? I mean... It's surprising considering he only came in in January and already there's talk today that he could leave the club. Yeah, I think, again, we can do nothing about speculation. I think it's a credit to him in terms of the way he's performed, but not only the way he's performed, the way he is. I've said before, he's um, a very, very good professional, very good, mature head on his shoulders. Uh, I have no problem with speculation, but we have them... You know, we have our best players tied up. Of course, there can always be bids. We can always turn them down. Um, 
But again, football's football. You'll always get bids for good players. You've said you absolutely want to keep him, but how important is it that Leicester hang on to, to good young players like him? Yeah, I think it, it's vitally important. And, um, you know, speaking to Wilfred, he's very happy here. He knows that um, we've given him the opportunity. And I'm sure that uh, hopefully he'll be a, a player here for a long, long time. Thanks, folks. We're going to do the embargo. Down.